Uh, where are y'all? I think if you're still still uh, struggling with this this difference between what you could expect in ambient air versus what what the benzene content is in dry gas, are you still are you still kind of at that point where you where you want a little perspective on that, maybe or maybe you already do or no, I, I could um, use some reassurances because I mean I'm just yeah. really am uncomfortable with being two blocks away from a flow back where you know for right. number one the water's going to be sitting down there for three months, but number two where the Colleyville test did show there was some benzene, they did take yeah. the reading above the frac tank and you know i mean no one lives above the yeah. frac tank but please yeah. make me feel better about this well let me let me help you put that in perspective uh, uh for, first of all i think i think it, it, it's it's obviously uh you know it's totally normal to find benzene in in, in all gas streams and and, and you, you will typically find less of it in dry gas just because uh, of its nature it doesn't tend to carry those types of uh, organic uh, compounds in it so 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 the fact that there is benzene in dry gas Shouldn't, shouldn't be a surprise, but 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 the, but but I, but I think the, the assurance I want to give you is that um, the concentration in dry gas is, is not is not what could be expected to be found in the ambient air. And, and let me give you a kind of an analogy to that. Uh, it, it may be true. It may be true that, for instance, tailpipe emissions from a car have have very dangerous levels of carbon monoxide in it, right? But but we all we all uh, live near tailpipes on cars, and, and and the point is is that the concentration in in the exhaust of the vehicle is not the concentration that that, that can be expected in the in the breathing air, the ambient air. Uh, so so the, the fact that that the dry gas has, and I think according to your numbers, uh, uh, 55 to 85 parts per billion uh, of benzene in it, um, that that shouldn't be a concern to you about what you could expect. Uh, you know, in the in the ambient air uh, at your house, or or even at any uh, at any short distance from 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 the source. You see, um, that, that that concentration once it once it's uh, emitted uh, uh, returns to a to a to a safe level of you know uh, in, in short distance from its source. And, and, and some other reassurance, and, and, and one of the one of the things I wanted to to maybe uh, um, correct from your statement was. You commented about the ERG study not not addressing these pre-production activities, and 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 Kim, I, I was on part of the uh, the um, um, the group that that uh, worked this process and uh, and, and selected the uh, consultant ERG to do that study, and I, I was on the Barnett Shale Air Quality Group that was, um, and I was appointed by by uh, uh, the city of uh, Fort Worth to to help with that. But so so I know the study real well, and. And what they did do is, is, in fact, they did measure ambient air concentrations uh, around frac jobs in, in the in the Fort Worth uh, area. And, and I should say that the Fort Worth area gas quality is much richer, much more wet than, than the quality of, of the gas in, in, in your area. So so it does contain more benzene than the than the than the gas that you've got uh, in, in, in your Arlington area. So, uh, but what they did find from that study, Kim, that should give you some assurance is that the concentrations of benzene. Uh, on the edge of those locations uh, was not above any sort of uh, human health concern. During fracking, right? <clears throat> Yeah, during fracking and flowback. Well, during no. flowback, I, I was under the impression the ERG study just uh, turned on a, the FLIR camera and said, looks normal, and then take a SUMA no. canister. Is that true yeah, or so, not? So I encourage you to go to the, to the Fort Worth site and pull down the, pull down the, uh, the study. But, but no, in fact, in fact, what they did is they operated uh, air quality uh, monitoring devices uh, for, for those pre-production activities. So, so they did, they, um, you know, it is true that some of their study involved FLIR cameras to find sources and different things like that, but this particular part of the study, uh, uh, they, they actually set um, uh, air monitoring devices, so instruments to measure air quality uh, downwind of those pre-production activities. Look, so, I know on the uh, drilling, they did, an, they did an electric rig, which wasn't typical of what we've been enduring with the diesel rigs, so that was disingenuous to not study diesel rigs during drilling. Is that... Did y'all? What do you have to say uh, about that? You know, that's not coming to mind about the about the, the electric rig, frankly. I, I guess that if that is true, I, I'm not aware. Of it that. is. I talked to one of the guys that made the presentation in Fort Worth when it was time to release the results to the public. I personally talked to him after the meeting. He said we looked at an electric rig during drilling. Okay. Uh, so uh, it's been some time, and, and I, I don't recall about the about the uh, the drilling rig. But but I, but I thought your concern was more around the gas quality and the flowback. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to talk. For benzene 
concentration. Yeah, yeah I, maybe there isn't a whole lot of benzene during fracking. I'm more worried about the silica dust. I know the Colorado three-year air study uh, talked about flowback being the most, you know, benzene intensive phase or BTEX intensive phase of drilling. So yes, I am concerned about flowback and I understand Colorado has a mix of half dry, half wet. So I, I really... When they say you, know, you live within a half a mile of flowback activities, you have five times the VOCs, I'm not saying, well, maybe if I live within a half a mile, which I do, maybe I have two and a half times more VOCs than those that live outside of a half mile. So. Yeah. Well, be, be careful about making some of those kind of linear assessments of concentrations with distance because you, you, you know that, that, that concentration has changed exponentially with distance and things like that. So, 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 so um, but, but uh, you know, I can't speak really to the Colorado data and how that compares to, to where we are in Arlington, but, but I think the, the, the most current piece of work and, 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 frankly, the most comprehensive piece of work of air quality assessments in a, in a rural area uh, like yours is, is that ERG study. It, it has not been, uh, you know, it, there hasn't been a better study than the ERG well, in terms you, of its comprehensive nature and, and the sources that it measured. Could so. you tell me what page the flowback air uh, summa canister results are on? And, you know, because I want to look at the, where, you know, the fence line, if they were too close or, you know, because sometimes those emissions go up and out and then we want to know where they fall down because what was presented to the Fort Worth Independent School District from the League of Neighborhoods by Dr. Melanie Sadler here at UTA who this is her she's you know this is what she teaches how to test air environmental issues and two other experts said that really people need to be a, a mile away the schools need to be a mile away from drill sites so I you know dispersion modeling that's what I'm all for I want to understand if I'm with and a half a mile of a flowback operation. What page on that ERG study can I view those summa canister results? Uh, well, I, I, in terms of what we've been talking about, which is the, the which is the, uh, the the pre-project work uh, or the pre-production work, flowback. Uh, I believe uh, I can't really steer you to it. I, I just have a summary presentation kind of in my hands right now, but but. Uh, um, their, their data tables uh, again. If you pull down that that that, uh, that report from from the city of Fort Worth webpage, their data tables will you'll be able to tell which uh, sites are the pre-production sites, and you'll be able to pull down the, uh, the 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 empirical data that was used. All their data tables are in that report. But I was told, and I, I, I hate that I didn't verify it myself, but it was a very huge report to pull down, and I did some spot analysis. But I I'm going by what uh, attorney Bradbury posted in a Fort Worth Star-Telegram mm -hmm. uh, editorial. And, you know, there was, there was a mention at uh, one of the NCTCA meetings that during flowback, all they did was turn on a summa canister and said, yep, looks like flowback, but did not invo invoke a summa canister test. Is that true or not? Um, uh, I guess I'm, I'm confused about, about, about did not invoke a summa canister. Didn't take test. an air test during flowback. Is did yeah. anyone take a summa canister during flowback? Oh yeah, I believe they did. Uh, yes, they did. Okay, that's what page I was trying to get to. But you're saying you don't have it handy. But just go to the. No, I, I just have the summer report okay. uh, of, from the meeting that we had when they, uh, you know, when they kind of gave us the the, the results. Mm -hmm. and, and to be honest with you, Elisa Rich from Wolf Eagle Environmental told me that. If they're on the fence line taking summa canister readings, how is that helpful to people breathing in the neighborhoods when we don't know where the fallout is? That sometimes you can get too close to take an air sample, that being too close is the exact place you want to be if you don't want to know what's in the neighborhoods. Yeah. So why didn't they summa canister test in the neighborhoods? Yeah, well, what I'm looking at right here, uh, just as I flip to this uh, uh, presentation, is it looks like the sampling activities around these sites and and they did ambient air quality measurements around some high level activity sites and and some mobile source sites and some uh, and then these pre production sites that we're talking about these these fracking sites um, they, they measured the air quality uh, f for uh, uh, two months in duration and uh, they had a, they, they collected uh, uh, it doesn't exactly say what what device or method they used but they they sam they took samples every three days uh, over that two months. And, uh, and it, well, maybe, maybe if I read between the lines, it looks like they were using 24-hour sumer canisters uh, at those sites uh, over the course of two months. You're talking post-production. Uh, 
and then they then they looked at the data and compared it to the long term screening levels. So, yeah, and I hear I hear where you're going with this, but it sounds like we're talking about post production now. When you say two months, I mean, I want to know about well, well, slowback. The, the important thing to the, I think the important thing to recognize is, is what I recall from that study is, is they just basically followed that frac that frac uh, around, right? So they, they followed that, that 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 process around so they could get uh, a comparable amount of data. Frac or flowback? Uh, the, the frac and flowback process, the, that pre-production activity. Uh-huh. So that's right. That's a good catch. But uh, but so they they they, uh, they followed it around so again they could get uh, you know a comparable amount of data that that they that they got from um, from um, you know static sites. So so have you have you pulled the have you pulled the report down then and, and gave it a good read because um, you know this is this has been peer reviewed and kicked around a lot uh, in, in industry and and, and, and and again with some of the some of the folks you've been talking to and, and, and it really it really uh, has uh, I'll just tell you it has it has stood the test of time and, and, and it's got the respect of the EPA and and, uh, and other regulators about the quality of the work that was done here so. Um, uh, I encourage you to pull it down and, and give it a good read. Okay, well, I'm going to try to. Right now, I'm looking at 62 uh, TCEQ summa canister results just from Arlington tests. I'm trying to parse those out from which ones were flowbacks. You know, uh, I did look at the Arlington compressor station, and it's got 2.3 parts per billion benzene on a 30 minute sample, and I'm um, hoping that was during a blowdown. But because um, that already, you know, if, if they can go out and, you know, keep sampling over there, you've got people living down there from a compressor station that violates the long term ESL if that is indeed our long term reading of benzene from that compressor station. So that's kind of what I'm working on today. I, I, I am interested in summa canister readings during flowback in the neighborhoods because that's what's relevant to me but can you tell me yes or no are they in the neighborhoods or not did they summa can you know canister test in the neighborhoods i don't are think you talk, are you talking again about the erg, ERG? yeah did did uh, they yeah I, I think they were i think they were on the edge of location where the where the concentrations were were expected i mean they were on the edge of of where the where the public could have access so okay so they, they, they were set up in areas where the concentrations would expect to be the highest Okay. Well, you know, it just kind of disturbs me when, you know, they say you need to be a mile away from drilling. Uh, you know, the, the group that presented to the Fort Worth Independent School District on behalf of the Fort Worth League of Neighborhoods. Were you familiar with that study? Uh, 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 just on the periphery, Kim. Frankly, and uh, and, uh, and I haven't studied, but but you, but uh, I'm sure you've I'm sure you've seen uh, I'm sure you've seen a lot of uh, different reports on uh, on that sort of thing, and from from different uh, sources. Um, and and I'm, I'm just here to I'm just here to uh, describe what I know the best, which is which is this ERG study, and and uh, you know it, it it again is the most comprehensive. Uh, Probably most with the most scientific horsepower of any of the studies that were done in the in in the uh, in the Fort Worth area. And, and and the other thing you should know is that you know there's been there's been a series of uh, eight other studies that that were that were quite similar to ERG, just not as comprehensive. And and, and in fact, there was also a study done by the uh, Mickey Leland Air Toxics Foundation. And again, these are high-powered scientists doing work, and and, and none of the studies, frankly, uh, documented any concentrations from from uh, oil and gas activities. Uh, in, in frankly, in areas with higher benzene uh, product than than what you've got in your area, uh, none of these studies demonstrated any uh, any concentrations that would be of health concern. Now, Jim Jim Bradbury, you, he was with, didn't he work with you on that air? Yeah, that's right. He was on the he was on the group. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Did, so, did you understand the nature of his concerns? I mean, were they did they pan out as being legitimate? Um. Kim, so so those were concerns expressed expressed kind of at when the when the uh, back in July time frame of last year when the report was released. Yeah, did you want me? To, well, the article, the editorial that you know he had written about the holes in the study and yeah. this, and gaps of information that was missing. Were you? Did you agree with him that you know those were legitimate yeah. gaps? I guess I can't. I can't quote exactly what 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 his concerns were, but 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 I, I, I think what I will say is that um, um, his concerns weren't shared by by others on 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 that on that group. Okay. Uh, now let's see. You you're not Vince White. You're Darren Smith. I am. Yeah. D A R R. Yeah. Uh, D A R 
B-A-R-R-E-N. That's B-A-R-R-E-N. Right. Oh, okay. Well, if I find Jim Bradbury's um, editorial, I can email it to you. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. Is that Darren Dot Smith? Yeah, it's the same convention as Vince's uh, email. That's right. At D E V O N dot. Oh, no, it's it's just D V N. Oh, D V N dot com. That's yeah. right. Okay. Right. Well, I appreciate you calling me and trying to help me feel better about this. I do need to look at the uh, fence line summa canister readings during flowback that Dr. Elisa Wolf said is the perfect place you would want to test if you don't want to know what they're breathing in the neighborhoods. So you can see why I didn't spend a whole lot of time digging those up because she said that's not that's exactly the wrong place to take an air sample. Well, well. What, what, what you should know and kind of what I talked to you about is, is, is uh, the distance from the source will reduce the concentration. So if you're measuring concentrations as close as you can to the source, then, then to me, from my understanding of dispersion, is that uh, any concentrations farther away from that will be lower. So I'm not really sure where Liz is coming with that comment, uh, maybe suggesting that somehow these uh, missions get lobbed over the fence line and land in the neighborhoods. Uh, that's, just, that's really just not the case with these emissions. I mean, we don't propel them up at, uh, at some high uh, point or anything like that. These emissions take place near the ground level. So, so to me, measurements as close to the source as you can would represent the worst case. So, um, uh, well, I looked at a <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> I looked at a Canadian study <clears throat> of um, cattle gestation periods, and they showed some graphs about how <clears throat> benzene lingers. <clears throat> excuse me. They've <clears throat> got a lot of silica dust couple blocks from me and I don't know if it's getting into my home or not. I just can't clear my throat the last couple of days. Um, uh-huh. <clears throat> that benzene is a steady state, especially in the winter time. And then it has a drop off point. And I have to go back and look at that study, but I thought I thought that study said something like fifteen hundred or twelve hundred feet, something like that, or twenty five hundred feet. I wish I could remember exactly. So I mean I'm not comfortable living within a half a mile. <clears throat> uh I appreciate you calling me, and uh, okay. thank you. I'll try okay, to send. Well, I'm glad I caught you, and uh, and uh, yeah. So, uh, so, so, I, so I hope that helps. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks.